Hi, it's Dave here and in this video we are going to talk about how you can run lab testing in order to find out what's going on with um, the underlying causes of your heartburn and or acid reflux. And so there's a couple of different categories that I wanted to cover, loosely divided into um, medical testing that the doctor would need to run or a gastro specialist, and then the testing that you can actually run yourself without leaving the comfort of your own home. Now, just a quick, uh, again, disclaimer before I start with this one. Um, there are integ uh, integrative medical practitioners, uh, naturopaths, um, who are medically trained, who can run some of these tests. They're not just stuck with these standard medical tests. And so it's not that one half of the equation is more important or better or worse than the other. I just want to give you an overview of all the things that are available to help you do a little bit of digging. And if you do struggle to get your doctor to run the appropriate testing medically, um, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, doctors say, well, you just have a little bit of heartburn, you know, go away and take some medications, you know, we're not going to run testing and things. Some people do run into that challenge. And so if you are in that position, um, or you want to take things into your own hands anyway, then we've obviously got these options um, in terms of sort of DIY testing. But let's start with the medical tests. First of all, as you're probably aware, there are various scopes that can be placed in the mouth, down the esophagus and into the stomach, and that's called an, an endoscope. Uh, you can also stick the tube up the other end, if you like, and that's called a, 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 colo a colonoscopy or a colonoscope. So you've got the endoscopy at the top and the uh, col colonoscopy at the bottom. We're gonna focus on the endoscopy. Um, the drawback with the endoscopy is it's not very pleasant. You've got to wait for an appointment. You've got to go there, lie on your side and have this thing shoved down your throat. It's, it's not nice. But the benefits of an endoscopy are that it can find things that these tests can't find. So it's able to see how inflamed the tissue is in your esophagus and in your stomach and, and in the upper part of your small intestine. It's able to find structural um, issues like uh, ulcers, for example. Um, damage to the stomach tissue and what have you. Um, and so it does have a very high relevance. It's a very, very useful test, um, in my opinion. I've never had one done myself, but my uh, dad has had one done. Many of our clients have had them done as well. Sometimes what they'll also do is they will take a biopsy of the tissue. If they find a bunch of red, inflamed, damaged tissue, they'll do a biopsy and, and then analyze that to see what's going on, whether there are H. pylori, bacteria in there, etc. And then of course, one of the things that's not particularly nice to talk about, they can identify things like stomach cancer and what have you, and esophageal cancer um, with the help of endoscopies as well. So the endoscopy is very, very useful. Uh, one of the other drawbacks, apart from it being quite inconvenient and, and unpleasant to have, is that um, it doesn't look for half of the stuff that this set of tests looks for. It doesn't look for SIBO, it doesn't look for really for candida, they don't consider parasites and uh, food intolerances and things. And so even if they find some inflamed tissue in the stomach, for example, there's no indication of why that's happening. And the reason may be something um, on this side. Um, the Heidelberg capsule test is a second test I want to talk about. That's actually um, a test that was developed in the 1970s, uh, which is very sensitive for stomach acid levels. Um, it's used by a handful of natural or integrative doctors, functional medicine doctors. Again, you have to really go to the clinic to have this test done. Um, you can't do it at home, but it's a very accurate test for determining stomach acid levels. Uh, my opinion, and I know this is difficult for various reasons within the medical system, is that everybody who has heartburn and acid reflux for an extended period of time should be having this test run. Unfortunately, the bog standard approach is not to test, it's just to assume that the stomach acid level is too high and give the uh, appropriate medications to bring the stomach acid level down. And so I think this test would be very helpful if it were more widespread. You might be able to find somebody in your area who runs this test if you're interested in finding out whether your stomach acid level is too high or too low. As I've said before, in many of the uh, heartburn and acid reflux cases we've worked with, the stomach acid level's actually been too low. Um, and so this is a useful test for differentiating the, the high and the low there. And then of course, H. pylori. The medical system recognizes H. pylori very well. It, they know that H. pylori causes problems. They know it causes heartburn, is associated with acid reflux, it causes ulcers, 
and it's associated with stomach cancer. So they'll quite readily test for H. pylori in many cases. But I think it's worth noting now, and, and especially in regard to the testing that, that we use as well, there isn't a perfect H. pylori test, right? Sometimes you can have a false negative. And so just because you have one test done and it shows negative for H. pylori, it's not guaranteed that the H. pylori is not there. Sometimes it can actually be useful to have uh, a second test. Many times we have found H. pylori using our testing where the medical testing has missed it. And sometimes we have missed it with our testing and the medical testing has found it. And so I just wanna make sure that you bring all the lab testing down off a pedestal and, and don't assume that it's 100% perfect because there isn't a 100% perfect test uh, in this uh, or in, on this whiteboard at the moment, unfortunately. Now, of course, um, H. pylori can be tested at home. That's how I found that I had H. pylori using a, a stool test. And I didn't just look for H. pylori, I actually ran a comprehensive stool test that looked for many, many different things. And that test was quite old fashioned. There are even more advanced tests available now. Uh, the ones that we use um, uh, in our practice typically look for uh, more than 70 different uh, factors or uh, imbalances in the digestive system ranging, ranging from uh, H. pylori, of course, um, uh, to uh, parasites, to yeast and fungal overgrowth, to uh, inflammatory levels, immune system markers, uh, friendly bacteria levels, and so on and so forth. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can look at using uh, these advanced home stool tests now. Now the comprehensive stool test will also look at opportunistic bacteria levels. And opportunistic bacteria levels, certain types when they're high on the stool test, can actually give you an idea about whether somebody has SIBO or not. And SIBO can cause fermentation, bloating, buildup of gas, increase the pressure in the abdomen, push everything upwards and cause heartburn and acid reflux. So SIBO is, worthy, is, a, is a worthy topic of investigation um, if you're not getting anywhere with your heartburn and reflux symptoms. So the stool test finds that there's an overgrowth of bacteria, but because it's not location specific, you're just looking at what's coming out in the stool, you don't know whether those high levels of, of bacteria are, are growing in the colon or in the small intestine. So in order to differentiate whether you have SIBO or not, unfortunately you have to run something called a breath test. Uh, this one that I've listed here is called a lactulose breath test. Lactulose is a specific type of sugar. You drink uh, the sugar in, in some liquid and then it goes through your digestive system. Um, you take breath samples every 20 minutes and they map out the production of methane and hydrogen in your breath over an extended period of time, usually three hours, and the pattern of those gases in your breath can determine whether you have SIBO, okay? So that's, that's another very useful test. Now, just to make sure that we're not imbalancing the argument, SIBO testing can also be done by the doctors. Some of the gastroenterologists and specialists run SIBO breath testing as well. It's not uh, exclusive just to kind of naturally orientated practitioners. Then you have organic acids, Organic acids is a urine test, and there's some very useful markers in the urine that kind of are chemical footprints of overgrowth of different microbes in the digestive system. And so sometimes this can be useful, particularly when it comes to identifying yeast, fungal overgrowth, and things like mold overgrowth as well, which can, in some cases, contribute to heartburn. So we've got H. pylori test at home, we've got comprehensive stool testing, we've got the organic acids, we've got the breath testing, and finally we have food sensitivity testing. So these are um, far too complex for me to explain in this video. Just know that you can do these at home. You, 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 there are some versions of food sensitivity tests where you need to go and have a full blood draw, um, but there are some in which you can use just a finger prick blood sample, and they'll identify whether you have certain types of sensitivity to different foods. And in some cases, again, we find people's digestive symptoms settle down when we identify which foods they have problems with and then they eliminate those foods from their uh, daily diet. So a broad overview of the different tests you can run. My recommendation is that obviously for, for cost implications, um, start with the simple stuff that you can get from your doctor. But if you're not getting anywhere with the doctor, if there's a massive waiting list or the doctor just, just wants to prescribe medications, you can do all of this at home. It's all available. The test kits are shipped to your home. You provide the sample, you send it off. Usually within a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks, the results come back, you get a copy of the results and then we can help you through understanding what they mean and then, and then help you uh, 
understand how to progress, what to do, specific action steps in order to uh, overcome whatever is found in the testing. So I hope that uh, broad overview has been useful. Uh, elsewhere in our video library, I've gone into much greater detail on all of these different tests. Uh, and so if you want further detail, have a good rummage around the, uh, uh, the video library and you'll, and you'll find them there. I'll put some links under the video to some of the specific uh, content as well. So I look forward to talking with you again um, soon. Um, my name's Dave Hompez, as you know, and I'll catch you in a wee bit. Thanks.